I've got a confession to make. About a month ago, I did my Manjaro Why Did You Do This To Me video, basically stating that the new update of Manjaro completely broke my system and I was really upset with what happened. I followed that up with a Manjaro and its developers can kiss my you know what, pointing out the problems with the operating system and how the developers and the forums really don't want any help from anybody unless you're in their inner circle. So I switched my main machine to Nitrix OS. That's what I've been doing my videos on, and that's what I've been pretty much making all my content with. Now, what I didn't tell you all is that my two business machines, one I use for graphic design, and the other I use for my marketing business, I switched over to a secret OS. One that I have done a video on in the past that I really wanted to put through its paces. And let me tell you something, guys. I'm glad I did, because the minute I get done with this video, it's going on my production machine that I do all of my content with, and it's going to be the OS that I use on a daily basis for my content creation and for my businesses, because it's that damn good. And the OS I'm talking about is Storm OS. That's what we're covering today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is brought to you by the eBuzz Central store. Do you love using Linux? Do you love showing people that you use Linux? Well, the eBuzz Central is your one-stop shop. We've got everything. We've got t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, tank tops, long sleeve tees, hats, phone cases, stickers, mugs, water bottles, and steel tumblers. And we cover a lot of different distributions. We've got Arch. We've also got our pseudo apt Git install a life. We've got our Debian-based Git Linux. We've got eBuzz Central merch. We've got our standalone Linux, which is just the word Linux with the penguin. We have our Kali Inspired, which is just the dragon, which I truly love. And one of my favorites, it's okay if you don't like Linux, not everyone has good taste. We've got our Linux Mint, Fedora. We also have our Don't Try This At. And of course, one of the viewers' favorites, Losing My Mind, One Distro at a Time. And our brand new addition is the Storm OS. It has completely replaced everything that was Manjaro on my shop with Storm OS. It is a beautiful design. We've got it in hoodies, t-shirts, you can get it on a mug, sticker, whatever you might like. But I think it's a real beautiful design, so check it out. So if you love Linux and you want to show people that you wear Linux and you want to show your pride in Linux, zip on over to the eBuzz Central store. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And if you want to see something on the store that's not there, Please drop that in the comment below and we'll work on that. So now we're going to go over to the Storm OS website. Okay, we are at the Storm OS website and it's pretty straightforward. You've got home and download. If you scroll down, it says about us. It says Storm OS is a Linux distro based on Arch, developed by Ben Fitzpatrick with the contributions by Silent Robot, Seeker, Razor1981, and TJ Wolf. I have been in constant contact over the last two weeks with Ben. He's probably been wondering why I haven't got this video out sooner, but I wanted to put it through its paces on my work machines before I did this video. I told him this video would be out about three or four weeks ago, and he's been patiently waiting. So I just wanted to let him know the reason was is I had it on my work computers, and it is doing fantastic. Included software with the distribution is Steam, Discord, Wine, Lutris, GIMP, LibreOffice, and Zoom. And I pretty much use all of those on a daily basis other than Zoom and Wine, but each user has different tastes of what they're going to use it for. And then he's got some older reviews down on the bottom. And then, of course, if you like them and you like the OS, you can donate down here and help them out greatly, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to zip on over to the Storm OS desktop. One more thing I want to point out before we go to the desktop. When you go over to Downloads, you can go right here and you can download from SourceForge. The first selection is XFCE. The second is KDE. SourceForge was a little slow for me, so I went with a mirror link, which is from Google Drive. The first one here is XFCE, and the second one is KDE. It downloaded in about 7 minutes from Google Drive, and it was going to take about 45 minutes from SourceForge. You guys know if you've downloaded anything from SourceForge, it's hit and miss. Sometimes it's really quick, sometimes it's slow, so I wanted to show you that real quick before we went to the desktop. So now, let's zip on over to the desktop. Now, if you download Storm OS, throw it on a USB, put it into a virtual machine, and 
boot into it, this is the screen you're met with. It automatically gives you the install option right up front. You don't have to install it if you just want to look at it in a live mode. All you got to do is close this out and you're in live mode. It does have the Calamares installer. Now they did have some hiccups with the Calamares installer, but that was across several different distributions. But they have it ironed out finally. And that's the beautiful thing. Calamares is a great installer. And it does experience bugs in every now and then. So you got to get those fixed. Now it's the standard. You get location, keyboard, partitions, and users. And then it gives you Storm OS packages. Now right here you can add different things that you want to. Different browsers and things like that. I'm not going to install it because I am in virtual machine. But the minute I get done with this video, editing it and posting it, I will be installing Storm OS on my main production machine. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and close out of this. Then you're going to have the Storm OS welcome screen. It says welcome to Storm OS. This will help you get started. Keep in mind that this app will be replaced after install with a post install version. That is a great version. It gives you several different things you can do all the way from updating your mirrors and installing software. It is great. It is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this so we can just look at the desktop. And I love that they just went with a standard KDE wallpaper. But if you do want to get something that's Storm OS themed, all you got to do is open up the wallpaper selection and wait for them to load. And once they load, you've got your standard KDE themes and wallpapers. And you can scroll down and you've got different things to choose from. And then you've got a couple Storm OS ones down here. You've got this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and apply that one. And you can see that is a beautiful wallpaper. I like the lightning in the background. And that's pretty much what gave me inspiration to do the design on the t-shirts and hoodies and things like that. And then down here, you've got the Arch logo with the Storm logo on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. As you can see, it's a standard KDE desktop. You've got a panel down on the bottom. And you've got your show your desktops, date and time. And then, of course, your hidden icons right here which is notifications updates clipboard night color control lock key status and vaults it doesn't come with kde connect out of the box so if that's something that you would like you can always go download it and put it on the system so let's go ahead and close out of that you've got your internet you got your most recent usb device of course your battery and your sound now if you wanted to adjust the panel down here all you got to do is right click and you can enter your edit mode and then you've got more options over here. You can get left, center, right, uh, visibility, opacity. You can really do some adjusting over here. Now, let me say something. Out of the box, I love the theme that it comes with. It's kind of a darker theme with the rounded icons. It is really beautiful. And in comparison, it really is a better looking OS than Manjaro, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then if you right click here, you can also add widgets. If you click on that, you'll have your widgets pop up over here. And you can pretty much just scroll through, find out what widget you want. You can add it to your task menu, or you can put it directly on your desktop. Now, if there's a widget you want that's not listed over here, all you got to do is go up here and search or get new widgets. Go find it, and then you can download it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And you've got Axel C8 already installed. This is something that if you want to download from an FTP or HTTP server, you can download from multiple locations. You've got install system right here. Then you've got menu X. If you click on it, it just says, hello, live user. Welcome to menu X, the Storm OS edition. For this program to work, you need the following program, zip, unzip, and curl. And it gives you several different options of different things you can do down here. Everything from update mirrors, sync and update apps, yay update, install packages, package removal. So this is a very powerful tool that's already installed. But take a look at it if you do give this a test drive. And then you have play movie and then W get them right here. Now what I do want to show you is I like the way that they have Firefox themed out of the box to pretty much kind of go along with the Storm OS look. And when you open it up, it lets you know that Google is right here. You can change that if you want to. It's real easy. And you've got the background up here or the banner up here. It's kind of an activated wallpaper. I really like it in the background. Now, it looks even better if you zip on over here and go down to More Tools and go to Customize Toolbar. You can get rid of the title bar. 
and then that way you don't have the title bar up there and it looks even better and then you can take home and go ahead and drag that up there if you would like that up there close and then you can go to home and it'll bring your home screen up now out of the box up here they've already have a few things installed okay you've got cookie auto delete https everywhere so if you want to be on a secure http you can do that with all websites decentralize and then privacy badger those are already installed out of the box you can take a look at those and make sure that they're to your liking and what you want on your system if you don't want them there all you got to do is uninstall them from firefox and you're good to go so we'll go ahead and close out of that now you do have file manager which is dolphin let me go ahead and open that up and I like the look of Dolphin. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And we can maximize it a little bit so you can see it. Let me go ahead and just make it full screen. And I do like the maximize window and minimize window buttons that they have up here. A lot of people will probably think they're too much like a Mac. I really like the way the Mac looks. Don't agree with the operating system or the company that builds it. But I do like some of their design. And then over here you've got your regular usual suspects. Then you've got remote, recent, search for, devices, and then removable devices. And then you got your home folders right here. I really enjoy the theme. I like the theme. And as always, if there's things over here you don't want to show, all you got to do is right click on them and hide the selection and it will just disappear. And then you've got more room to function and do the things that you want to do. And then if you want to make things a little bigger, just come down here, change your icon size to large. It'll make those a little bigger right there. Dolphin, I think, is one of the most underrated file managers. I hear people that either love it or they hate it. Linus Tech Tips did his Welcome to Linux gaming system, and he loathed Dolphin. But most of the things he complained about, I do on a daily basis in Dolphin, so I don't really know what all the fuss was about. So let me go ahead and close out of Dolphin. And then we're going to come down to Settings. And down here, you've got several different ways to customize KDE. Now, if you're somebody that hasn't used KDE or somebody that is using KDE but wants tips on how to set everything up and what exactly everything does, at the end of this video, I will go ahead and link a video where I cover everything in KDE and what it does. And then over here, you've got appearance, and it shows you different themes that you can put on it. Right now, we're running the Dracula theme, which gives it that dark feel, which I really like. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to home over here. And then we're going to scroll down and you've got a lot of different settings here. Notifications, users, accessibility. Like I said, many ways to customize it. And I'll be more than happy to link that video at the end so you can get some information. Now about this system, let's go ahead and bring that up. This is Storm OS 20.7. This was released yesterday. You're on KDE Plasma 5.24, QT version 5.15.3. And you are running the current Arch kernel of 5.17.1. Graphics platform is X11, which I am glad that it's X11 because the Manjaro automatically default into the Wayland a month ago really messed me up. So I don't have to worry about that here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of settings and we're going to open up the Storm OS app launcher. Now when you open it up, it doesn't have anything over here, but you do have development right here you've got icon browser qt assistant designer mathematics science graphics it has gimp installed out of the box libreoffice draw and one of my favorite screenshot apps flameshot let's go ahead and open that up it says hello i'm here click icon in the tray to take a screenshot or click with the right button to see more options now i love this for the simple fact you just click on it and it brings and covers your whole screen you've got a nice little area here that tells you what you can do, how you can do it. You can go up here and just click, drag down and take your screenshot. And then you get all these different options of things you can do with the screenshot. You can set pencil and paint tool, make marks on it, set a line. You can go ahead, set selection as the paint tool. Uh, you can set inverter. You can save it. You can leave the capture and not save it. Upload the selection. Choose an app to open with or just pin it to your desktop or you can pin it to your clipboard. So I'm just gonna close out of that. But if you have never used Flameshot, please zip on over, check it out. It's a great screenshot app. We're gonna come back down to the app menu. Then we'll go to internet. You've got Firefox. Thunderbird is your mail client. Multimedia, you got Pulse Audio Volume Control. You got VLC, Simple Screen Recorder, the LibreOffice Suite. Settings, 
this is what I really love. You have add and remove software. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this. And when you open this up, if you're used to using PayMac on any other Arch distro, you're going to fit right in here. First thing you want to do is come up here, go ahead and go to preferences and zip on over to third party and you can enable your AUR support. Okay. Once you do that, you'll be able to download things from the AUR, which comes in real handy, especially with any Arch or Arch distro that makes things really easy. And then you can always come over here, do a search for the applications that you want, and you can find them from the official repositories or from the AUR. Now, what I do like about Storm OS, let me show you something here. Let's go ahead and open that up and put software. You had add and remove software, which I just showed you. And then of course you have discover. You've got two different ways to get applications on this operating system. And once it populates, it shows you some of the featured ones right off the bat. The Krita, the Digicam, the Caden Live. You can also go over here and do a search if you wanted to. Let's look for something like OBS. And OBS pops right up and you can install it from the Discover Software Center. So you have three different ways to install software on this system. You can go from Command Line, you can go from PayMac, which is add and remove software, or you can go from the Discover here. I think that is great, just an extra tool to have on your system that makes things easier for the end user. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. We'll go back down to the app launcher, and we'll go back down to settings. You've got firewall configuration, text editor, YAD settings. You've got Discover, Dolphin we've already looked at, console, info center, utilities. You've got mouse pad, which is a great text editor. Planner, HP Device Manager, so you can hook your printers right up and be ready to go. And then Lost and Found. And then, of course, your Power Session. Log out, power off, whatever you want to do. That, guys, is a quick look at Storm OS. And let me just tell you, using it on two of my business computers for the last month has been a dream. Yes, I used Manjaro prior, but there were little, still little hiccups with Manjaro every now and then. I have run flawlessly on my business computers for a month. And like I said, when I get done with this video, Storm OS is going to be my main OS on my creative laptop right here. And I'm just not going to look back. Tell me what you think. Is Storm OS something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, zip on by the eBuzz Central store. Take a look around. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. If there's something you would like to see on the store that's not there, let us know. We'll do our best to get it up there for you. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, and follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the content that we're creating, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.